Hi, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film, I Human, playing as part of 10th European Union Human Rights Film Days. Uh, we are happy to host the director of the film, Tonya Hasan Shay, who is joining us from Oslo. Uh, hi, Tonya. Hi, thank you so much for uh, having me. Thank you for joining our session. Um, so you have been in the film industry since 1996. Uh, you mainly focus on human rights, environment, and the relationship between human and machine. Uh, in your previous documentary, Drone, you explored one of the biggest investments of the future, robot war. Uh, and now with iHuman, you're exploring how we are going to deal with artificial intelligence as humans, uh, socially, ethically, and economically, uh, etc. So can you tell us a bit why uh, why you are interested in human technology relationship and how did you decide making of uh, iHuman? Yes, that is a, is a great question. Uh, for me, uh, the relationship that we humans have to technology is extremely interesting. Uh, and also for me as a director, I have been uh, very focused on uh, power concentration and also abuse of power. And there is a lot of power in technology and especially in artificial intelligence. But also, you know, uh, I grew up without the internet and just the amazing rapid changes that I have seen uh, in my life in technology has also made me extremely interested and fascinated by how technology changes us as humans, how it changes our societies and, and definitely our future. And I got the idea for iHuman while I was working on drone. Um, and one of the, the you know, things that concerned me was to see how the weapons were becoming more and more autonomous. Uh, and when I started looking into that, I had sort of this, what I call a holy shit moment, because I realized that artificial intelligence was not just gonna change modern warfare, but everything around us. And also, uh, you know, I also kind of had a shock when I realized that artificial intelligence already is everywhere uh, without us having had a proper debate about what does this mean? What are the consequences of this most powerful and far-reaching uh, technology of our times? So for me, uh, you know, a human is meant to, to start that very much needed debate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're raising uh fundamental questions about uh, artificial intelligence in your film, which is really eye-opening. Um, so there are actually a lot of fiction films about artificial intelligence in the history of cinema. On the other hand, the number of documentaries are fewer, uh, as maybe the issue is really complex. Maybe the filmmakers are avoiding uh, to make a documentary about this issue, as it's really, really tricky. So. Um, this must be the real, real challenge for you, uh, the complexity of the issue, um, because there are many major issues around it, surveillance, security, the impact of uh, AI has on our daily lives, etc. So how did you form the structure of the film and what were the major challenges uh, during the development process? Yes, uh, that is also a very good question and a big one. But, you know, when I started uh, making iHuman, uh, I went into this, uh, this uh, project uh, super fascinated by artificial intelligence. And I'm also a big sci-fi fan. So I really wanted to figure out the nuts and bolts of this. And the whole team, you know, we took uh, machine learning classes and really did, did a lot of in-depth research over the five years of the production. Um, and one of the things that, you know, I, I wanted to do with like human was also show all the, the possibilities that this technology brings. Uh, but after countless of tech conferences and 80 interviews with some of the leading uh, minds in the, the AI field, I just started feeling really uneasy with all the fluff and the hype around this technology. Uh, and I also got increasingly concerned on how we are not talking about the ethical challenges that this technology brings today. Uh, so I decided to, to make a film about the ethical challenges that I believe that we have to address and that we, and that we have to solve. 
before we start focusing on only the positive benefits of this technology, uh, because one thing with AI is that it develops incredibly fast. That is why it is so crucial that we take a step back and try to figure out which way we are supposed to go and how we are or how we should use this technology and not only how we can use this technology. Because AI, you know, I mean, it's just like any technology, it's, it's a tool uh, and, uh, and it can use, be used for good, but it can also be used for, as a weapon. And, and that's what we have to decide right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, I think you're extremely successful uh, with the interviews in the film. You gather leading scientists and experts around the world, most innovative, most influential uh, people on the scene of AI. I assume these people must be really hard to reach um, as it's not a very accessible community, actually. How did you build trust to engage with the uh, AI community? In, in so many different, <laughs> different ways, but, but definitely, you know, in addition to sort of learning the nuts and bolts of this technology, uh, getting access to computer scientists uh, has been, <laughs> you know, a tremendous challenge that we have used uh, a lot of time on. And also just to, you know, try to like get on there in, the, in their sort of state of mind. Uh, because nobody really uses email anymore. So, you know, you have to reach them by text at a certain point during the day. But I managed to crack, crack some of these codes. Um, and I'm also, you know, I'm, as a director, I'm, you know, of course, extremely interested in humans. <laughs> and, and I love to connect. So I think that, you know, building that trust uh, within this community uh, was, was, you know, uh, a tremendous... Um, opportunity for me as well just to get to know some of these like brilliant minds that are leading uh you know this uh this um, ai revolution really mm -hmm. well it's really amazing to hear that they're not using emails anymore that's really interesting <laughs> to, to hear yeah, fun fact. Um, so there is this line uh, from ban gertzel in the film um if you look at what AI is mostly being developed for, I would say it's killing, spying, and uh, brainwashing, he says. Uh, so from the, from the perspective of human rights, uh, AI sometimes violates the human rights protections, the right to equality, right to privacy, and especially now with the outbreak of COVID-19, uh, the state surveillance is on the rise uh, globally. As a filmmaker, do you think privacy uh, will never be the same in post-COVID era? Do you think our lives will be more, more controlled with AI? Uh, and artistic-wise, would you be interested in making more films on this issue? Well, you know, I've been, I've been working on the, the issue of, uh, of uh, humans and technology for 15 years, and I'm definitely, you know, um, I'm a bit of a nerd as well, and, uh, and there's so many, you know, super interesting and also crucial and very important issues uh, that I definitely uh, am keeping track of. Uh, so I think that I'll always be working uh, with something within this field. Um, and when it comes to, you know, what kind of future we want, um, I am hopeful. Uh, I do feel that, you know, maybe during this pandemic, we have seen how governments around the world already have architectures of complete and total surveillance in place. Um, and maybe, you know, when we come out on the other side, we will see, you know, that this is not the kind of world that we want to live in uh, and that we will continue to fight for our privacy uh, rights. Because maybe, I mean, at least for me and, and here in Norway too, there have been uh, pretty big revelations on how uh, different actors are already tracking our phones uh, and everybody's feeling more and more uneasy with face recognition cameras that are popping up everywhere. But it is going to take kind of all of us to realize that we have more power than we think uh, and we can and should demand to know how our data is being collected, how it's being used and how it's being being treated as a commodity. Uh, and I like to, you know, believe that we are not just users uh, under the tech elites sort of uh, matrix, but we are citizens uh, and we should demand uh, and fight 
for our rights as citizens of, uh, of democracies. Mm -hmm. Tonya, thank you very much for sharing your uh, film uh, with us. Uh, it's really, I mean, the, uh, every, every process in the film, the editing, directing, visual effects, sound design is really amazing. And thank you for sharing your documentary film with us. And is there something you would like to add? Well, thank you so much for, for having me and thank you so much for, uh, for watching the film. And, uh, you know, one thing that I would just like to add, because we are living in, in such a intense, uh, intense time. And I do hope that, you know, as everybody is experiencing how the world is being put on pause, that we kind of dare to dream uh, in new ways and, and actually also participate in creating the new future, because the best way to control the future is to create it. So thank you so much uh, and have a great festival. Thank you for joining the session.